Here we go. Hello, everybody. I'm Beverly Webb, and I'm really pleased to be here this evening with a wonderful friend and a fellow practitioner from the Chrysalis Effect. So I think most of you know, but I'm an accredited wellness coach and recovery practitioner with the Chrysalis Effect, and Carol is also a practitioner. So for those of you who know me, you know that as a wellness coach, I am, I specialize in adults overcoming stress, trauma, and particularly childhood abuse or adverse childhood experiences. That's my specialism. But before we go on, I'd like Carol to introduce herself, especially for those people that don't know Carol. Carol, over to you. Hello and good evening, everybody, or good day or wherever you might even be in the world. Um, so welcome to this evening's uh, live streaming with Bev and thank you for inviting me. Um, so uh, just to um, say that, yes, I've worked with Bev for a, a long time and we actually did our practitioner training together. Um, I'm actually also registered as a psychotherapist and um, I'm particularly interested in the emotional component and pain and how the mind body works. Um, that's the thing that really floats my boat. Um, and that's the bit I really like to get to uh, grips with the people in their recovery from any chronic pain really. Um, and it's a long build up over many years, um, usually going back to childhood. And that's where Bev and I have that, that interest in common is to get to the bottom of how it shaped the person that you are today. So. There we are. That's a little bit about what I do. <laughs> and thank you for sharing that. Just a slight technical hitch. I actually forgot to turn off the volume on the Facebook Live. So I think we're all running now. <laughs> so this is a half an hour session. But what I want it to be is interactive with everybody. So I'm very well known for my best and worst. And I know some people whenever they're in a bit of a predicament and I'm the first one to say, well, let's look at the best and worst. I do get a few looks and shall we just say certain language comes out occasionally, but it's something that I've found really helps. So what we're gonna look for today is, or look at, is our best and worst of the day. Because every day is a different day. It's something I used to always do with my children, even before I was a qualified coach. And I found it was a great way to open the conversation. So I'm going to start because we do it just with a sentence. But I'd like those of you that are watching right now. So if you're live, please put your best and worst of the day on. And if, you, if you're not watching it live, still do it because it's interactive. So you may not be live at that time, but we can still come back with you because that's what this is about so my best and worst of the day well um I think my worst of the day if I'm really honest was when I got a bit of a headache and I realized that whilst being on the computer is fantastic and I'm really creative and I'm loving doing some of the work that I'm doing and the learning I forgot my own um, awareness of self-care so that's my worst so I came off my best was when I went for a fantastic walk and I went for a really long walk and just got rid of the cobwebs and that was really lovely and being able to see other people face to face although yes we were social distancing please and for anyone that knows where I live I live in the middle of nowhere so it's absolutely beautiful so I only saw one or two people so Carol, what's been your best and your worst of the day? Um, it's been a, a little bit of a mixed bag. First, um, I'm going to say the best and worst bit was when you asked me if I do this Facebook Live, there was a definite a sort of flutter in the tummy thinking, oh my goodness, is that something I can do? <laughs> <laughs> so that's one thing. Um, so are we going to save the week one till later or are we going to do the week one now? Uh, we could do the week one now, go on. Now yeah. you're pushing me. <laughs> now I'm pushing you. Um, well, I'm on furlough and I was expecting it. Um, but when the actual call came, I have to say my stomach dropped to the, to really did drop. And, and, I, I, and for a moment there, I was like really highly anxious state. Although I was expecting it and it's something I wanted to happen, 
um, it was still a shock. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd put that one out there. So that things do happen throughout the course of your day or your week that actually, although you're expecting it, does really make you, you know, sit back a bit. Yeah, and to be honest, you're quite right there because when I think of my week, I like my own company. But it's really funny because I work different hours, as we all know. Mm. And yet Friday night was really, I'm not in on a Friday night for different reasons. And I felt more isolated than I have for a long time Friday night. Mm. But then my best has actually been having time to be with myself and be creative. And I've loved getting out my, um, I was going to say, um, I've forgotten what it's called, my big board. And I'm just vision board. <laughs> my big vision board, yes. And just being creative with that, that's been probably the best part yeah. of the whole week for me. So there's a few people being shy on Facebook. Lovely to see that you're here, some of you. Hello, Charlotte. Hello, Sherry. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Foz. If anyone wants to share their best and worst of the day or the week, that would be fantastic. Just put it in the comments. And what we can do is come back to that because we are going to come back to our best and worst. But for the next 15 minutes, we're going to have a conversation now between Carol and I. And yes, please put any comments in the comment section so we can come back to you as well. And Carol, with title of today's conversation is endings grief and new beginnings mm. and with your role one of the specialities you you're in is with bereavement mm. and endings grief and new beginnings is sort of what we're going through at the moment mm. so I just wanted you to just share an insight in some of the things that we can expect to happen to us emotionally for mm. acknowledgement and acceptance Mm. and also some of the ways that you work with your clients yeah of course um uh, one thing I, I want to say straight to the beginning is that um our grief is not the same as anybody else's grief no matter whether it might be because you've lost a job a relationship or somebody that you know close to you has passed away so whatever happens in your life is very different to what happens in somebody else's life. We all work, walk our own, own path. Um, I'm sure that most of your listeners and viewers will have heard and know about the five stages of grief. I'll just run through those. Um, so those are denial um, and anger, and then bargaining, depression, and acceptance. But the interesting thing is it's not linear. It doesn't work out that you do one step go into another and then into another and suddenly you'll get to acceptance. Um, we can have all of these in the state of a few moments even. Um, and so for instance, uh, just an example, um, when I lost my, my father, because he'd had um, you know, a, a debilitating illness over a certain amount of time, I actually got to the accepting stage very quickly when he passed away, but I'd done all the other grief things all the time that he was going through that process of you know dying so it's it's quite an it's a very interesting subject um it's a very emotive subject because it's not something we ever talk about um and uh, yeah i just wonder Bev, if you've got any questions that you want to ask me from what i've just said yeah well i mean I've, I, some people have put their best and worst so we can come back to them but yeah the grief bit i understand there because it's when it comes at different times so I've lost some people recently mm -hmm. and we went through that process of being able to say goodbye that doesn't mean to say that when they went you, I still didn't continue my grief mm. my the hardest grief for me was losing someone unexpectedly this year mm. and and the shock there was how much how deep it felt but also the other feelings and like you say, there's different stages, but we all feel it at different times. Mm. So for instance, anger, mm. you know, when anything ends in grief, whether it be through life, job or anything, it's amazing what anger 
we hold. And I found that with losing that person earlier this year, but sometimes that, that anger comes also when you're losing, like you said, when you let when a job's letting you go, even though you mm -hmm. want it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think it's important that we acknowledge that, but also abandonment issues. Now, when mm. I say issues, I felt very lonely and abandoned. Mm. And that can happen in different ways. Mm. Yeah, I mean, one thing I would say to anybody is that um, we don't always have good endings, you know, straight from childhood with things. Um, and that can be as simple as, you know, losing a friend along the way, or you change schools, or your grandparents pass away, or well, so many different things happen. And it's how you are um, supported to um, move through those endings. It's really important and it sets you up for life, you know, um, so yeah. Yeah, and I think that's where also with the current situation that we're in, there's been a lot of endings for people of how we live our everyday life. Mm. Yeah. So there's been a lot of shock, a lot, a lot of emotion, and we've yeah. seen it come out in different ways. We've mm. seen it in anger. We've seen it in fear. The mm. anxiety has has risen. So how does that correlate with those feelings of grief? I think what's happened is, um, although we're aware of all of this stuff going on, because it's um, happened to so many of us, at, at, you know, in such a short amount of time as well, trying to actually come to terms with anything, um, our usual way of life or what we do and how we, we cope with things have kind of gone out the window because we're, we're sort of constantly on high alert watching what's the other person doing, how are they managing, you know, how are they accepting that news and then we also have to cope with our own stuff that's, I was going to say a rude word then, but <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of going on and, and that, tri that absolutely triggers us, you know, and um, I'm incredibly lucky to have done the training that I've done. So I've, I've got a really good understanding around how I can manage it, what my triggers are and what I might expect from this sort of situation. But for those that don't, you know, you feel very lost. You feel very alone and very lonely. And actually, it's being able to articulate that or express it in some way um, that is helpful to you and that works for you. And, and you're quite right there. And you mentioned something about being a practitioner as well. I think sometimes even as practitioners, we expect ourselves to be able to be um, on a level playing field the whole time. Mm. But actually, mm. we ourselves have to continue to look at our self-care and self-care is so important. Mm. And I know that I've had to really check in with myself some days and sort of think, so what's going on? What am mm. I feeling? What am I hearing? And making some choices, as I know many people have. Mm. I don't have the radio on. The only time I have it on now in the afternoon is to listen to Steve Wright. Mm. Yeah. Yes, I listen to radio too. <laughs> um, or I listen to YouTube. And Charlotte, who's on here now, sent me a lovely um, link for YouTube which was gentle jazz sounds. Ah, oh, and oh, I yeah, yeah. never found it. Beautiful. Mm, yeah. So we're talking about endings, we've talked about grief. What about the moving forward? Because we're all being held at a place where we're finding who we are. Mm -hmm. We're all looking at our triggers and, and being held in a place that actually we can't run from them. We are being held in a place mm -hmm. that okay this is how I feel what do I need what what can I do who can support me and mm. we've all had to have support and continue to um but sometimes it's the new beginnings is another part of grief isn't it it's another stage mm. yeah there's there's a lot around not feeling guilty um uh, I think um particularly in this situation we're in at the moment the we are a lot of self-realization about the things we've been doing might not have been serving us, you know, to our for our best. And I'm just as guilty as anybody else about that, you know. Um, I'm finally being able to sort of live my life the last week in the way I want to, you know. Um, but then I feel a bit guilty about that because those people I've left behind or I, I feel I might perhaps be letting down because I'm not there as I might normally be, you know. And suddenly 
we've stopped seeing each other, we've stopped speaking to each other or having the ability to do that. So um, all I can say is from my own personal point of view with new beginnings that um, my new be beginnings have always come at my worst, absolute lowest point in my life. And I've then got um, a complete change in the way I look at things, the way I approach things, the way I think about things. Um, and also about feeling things, because we see things, we say, don't we, oh, I see what you mean, or I hear what you're saying, but it's about feeling it. And I think from this, we're going to start to get that feeling bit. Yeah, absolutely. And <clears throat> losing my voice there. The biggest thing I always say, as you know, is having the courage to have these conversations, which we're having now, mm -hmm. because by recognising what we're feeling and it's okay it's normal it's normal mm. to feel guilty mm. it's normal to grieve like you started out at the beginning saying although in your worst for the week although you you know you've got thoughts about moving on for your your job when you actually heard the news <laughs> yeah it was it was uh yeah I can't quite I'm still trying to come to terms with it I'm sort of journaling out what it is I was you know why was I feeling like that because actually it's something I wanted yeah. <laughs> um yeah so I'm just going to share thank you for that Carol because I'm going to share some comments and um I just want to give some time for some of these because it'll be great for you for us all to hear so Charlotte hello Charlotte so worst of the day getting too overwhelmed in the tasks that I've set myself oh yes we can all do mm -hmm. that best of the day Stepping away from work mode and returning to self-care. Going for a walk and taking a full hour to eat a lovely lunch and read my book. Let's click on that. Lovely. Um, and I will say Charlotte's an old hand because Charlotte grew up around the kitchen table with friends doing best and worst. So <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> Foz, Foz, um, best is enjoying the stillness and worst is the desire to comfort eat. <laughs> made myself a beautiful uh, banana cake and I ate it really quickly yeah, I know that feeling Michelle best part of the day was burning a thousand calories during my exercise class in my living room the worst part is that I now have a neck ache oh feel for you there so an extra self-care so Pauline my best of the day was when my neighbor rang the doorbell thinking I'd finished working to have a cuppa and a chat over the garden fence love that Michelle, best part of the week has been finishing my assignment for my degree. The worst part I won't be mentioning on here, and I send my love to you. However, Beverly, you know about that. Yes, and I'm with you then, Michelle. Oh, I'm trying to give you a heart, but it's just not letting me at the moment. It's just giving you a thumbs up, but I'm sending you a heart, and I'll change that as soon as I can. Hello, Carol. Um, sorry, worst is not being able to get into the right work-home balance yet. So still feeling a bit like a fish out of water. Best is getting out in the sunshine for lovely walks in nature with the dogs. Sherry, absolutely. And that's something that takes us a little while. Um, and I'll be covering that in another um, session that we do. Pauline says, I think every emotion I have gone through re-grief, having lost two special people in the last nine months. Yes. So this has come at a good time for you. Pauline, um, I have triggers around grief from a past trauma, and it's that I'm struggling with. So I don't know if you heard everything that we were talking about, Pauline, and thank you for sharing that, but you might want to go back into the programme and hear what Carol was saying earlier. Um, Carol, as in Carol without an E, um, <laughs> Carol Thompson, losing my grandson five weeks ago has impacted how I'm struggling right now. Absolutely, my lovely, and we're sending you lots of love there. Michelle, not sure I'll ever finish grieving for my daughter, don't know how to also grieving the loss of a relationship but so glad I bought the good buy forward otherwise the good buy was planned for April and it wouldn't have happened never delay something as you don't know what tomorrow brings and obviously the Covid is prime it's about living life each day oh and I've got a hugs there I've missed big hugs um oh some <laughs> Michelle said to Foz, I've had to give up comfort eating, not enough food in, miss chocolate. Um, 
Pauline's also saying, I think also the losses I've had, whether in the last few months to losing my daughter many years ago, there are correlations of feelings and feel I need to separate the losses as actually they are different and require me to be kind to myself and feel whatever they are. Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Right. Oh, going quickly here. Oh, I can't keep up with it. Hold on. Where have you gone, Sarah? Sarah, I saw something from you and I can't find it at the moment. So I have to come back. But nice to see you on, Sarah. Right, Carol. So we've got seven minutes left and I just yeah. want to take a couple of minutes just to acknowledge some of those um, mm. different feelings of grief um, and just to, to end up our conversation before we mm. do the go back to our best and worst. Yeah. Well, in fact, it will lead nicely into the, the best and worst of what we were sharing earlier about grief um, and about the different stages. Um, I just want to come back to the point uh, with a couple of people that are obviously um, their loss is very new and very raw. Um, there's no timeline on any of this. Um, all I will say to you, you just do it in your own time. Um, it's it's not about it's not a competition they've got to get through and you know in six months you need to be over this and getting on with your life it's um we know from our chrysalis effect work elaine talks about peeling the onion so that you can only take a layer off that you can cope with at one time if you were to smash that onion then you, you just couldn't cope with the, the consequences so only go as far and as fast as you feel comfortable going. And as I said at the very beginning, there's no right or no wrong way to do this. Grief is incredibly individual. Um, and I think that's, if I would, if anybody was to take anything from that today, it would be that this is your journey. So that's, that's really what I'd like to say to them. Thank you. I've now got Sarah's best and worst back. Um, Sarah, hello. You've, um, she's been gardening for four days and made friends with the worms, ladybirds, bees and nature. I had a tug of war with the ivy and I just loved being fantastic. Now, the, the thing is with me by doing the best and worst, what I wanted to be able to do was let's come back to the worst as we have been doing and reframing it. And when I say reframing it, we can't actually change some of the things that happens on the endings, particularly when we're talking about bereavement. Um, we can't change at the moment that the fact that we're all having a staycation in our, in our home. And I can't change um, that I got a headache earlier. However, what we can do is change or look at what we can do to change how we're feeling. And I always bring this back to the word self-care, but I know people get fed up with me saying self-care. <laughs> but for me, on my worst, my worst was feeling isolated on Friday. Well, actually, I found ways to socialise. So I'm, I'm now, instead of looking ahead, thinking I'm on my own for so long, I'm finding a way and I'm having, I've got a role that I'm applying for, for care in the community. So I live alone. I can, I'm self-isolating. So for me to go and support elderly at a vulnerable time is in line with how I feel and it gives me that lovely feeling of human contact, which I like. It's lovely speaking to you all on here. I do need real contact too. Yeah. Um, and today with my headache, um, I will make sure that I'm very aware of coming off of the screen. So Carol, Carol when you're talking about your best and worst and you're reframing, mm. how did you reframe your worst, which was um, your job? <laughs> well, it took, you, it actually took you to bring me back to where the, the reality of actually, don't forget you've been asking for this for some time, Carol, the universe has provided this, this for you. So I guess my reframe was that um, I, the things that I know is that the fear and the excitement are all come from the same sort of um, energy in your body. So it's a question of looking at that. So instead of that thinking that was a fear in my stomach, to look at that and think gosh this is really exciting because now I mean I, I can do things like this whereas before I would have been at work 
you know, and that's that to me is really exciting to be able to to meet new people, talk about things like this and really get those conversations going for me is really quite exciting. So that is the way I reframed my loss was to look at that particular way of being. This is my new beginning. Yeah, lovely. Foz has put one down to reframe my desire to comfort eat is going to be my positive affirmation and getting busy. Ah, oh, OK, that's lovely. And I know you do some wonderful hobbies. Sarah, um, sent to early, I do, know how, I do know how it is to nearly lose someone very close. And that's something we can't reframe necessarily losing someone because we can't change that. However, and I'm looking for it now, um, I'm going to go out of shot so I won't get it. Um, I, I actually did reach out for support because the bereavement was, um, as Carol said, comes in different stages. So I'm not ashamed to say that I've had support for that and I, I'm, I'm pleased that I did. And I was in that time, rather than looking constantly at what I'd lost, I was able to go into that feeling of grief in a supported way and I wouldn't um, say to some do it unsupported as Carol said there's different layers but for me I realized I had a present from that person and in that present was a pink rose quartz crystal and it's in the shape of a heart so what I've been doing is carrying that around and if I, I get a moment where I feel a little bit wobbly I actually hold that in my hand and remember the good parts of being with that person. And for me, that works. So for all of you that have been very brave and shared how you feel, thank you. I'd like you to just put one thing in about an intention that you're gonna do for your own self care, um, particularly this evening. Because when we do have a conversation like this, it's important to have one thing that you do for yourself that makes you feel loved and nurtured. So I've got a lovely drink here and I'm going to be doing a meditation after I found out about Oti Mabuse's dance classes. Because <laughs> I'm so excited. Carol, what are you going to do for your self-care? Well, I've got my candles ready. I've got my bath ready. I've got my Epsom salts to put in there, some lavender drops. So I'm, I'm really sorted for this evening. <laughs> Lovely. So is anybody else going to share with us at the moment? Right, Michelle, I'm cuddling an ice pack to ease neck, cuddling the dogs to keep warm. Oh, yes. In fact, Carol, you're hiding something that you've I got. Am. Come on, show us what you've got. Intro introduced you to, this was left to me by my mother-in-law and it's very special because um, contrary to what everybody says, I got on so well with my mother-in-law. She was like, my mother a mother to me um and she left me this and uh so it sits in my bedroom reminds me of her every day Aww. and i have and i have a little chat to it every now and then if i need to <laughs> and that's lovely right we've got some more michelle's thinking of ordering some plants online to do my pots oh yes the only thing is there was loads of um frost out this morning i noticed charlotte binge watch sex in the city whether my boyfriend agrees to it or not oh god i haven't watched that for a long time i remember getting divorced and that was my guide wonderful buzz dance oh god yes you i'm with you there carol pauline sarah anything that you're able to share with us for your self-care that you're going to do just before we sign off because i'm very aware we said 30 minutes and i don't want to keep you much longer um, I'd love your feedback about today. I'm going to do another one of these next week with a different subject. Sherry, watch an uplifting film. Oh, yes. I do have a favourite film that I recommend. Under the Tuscan Sun. You can get it on Prime. You do have to pay for it, though. I've got it on DVD because I watch it so much. Um, I have a love of Italy. So... All right, thank you, Beverly. I will have to leave soon as I have a networking meeting. Wish I could stay as it's so lovely. Lovely to speak to you, Sarah. And we are just finishing. Carol, you might not get time to share on here right now. I want to say goodbye to you all. Lovely ladies. Thank you for joining us. And we will be back next Wednesday evening with another guest joining me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.